Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and in this video we're looking at Microsoft Excel spreadsheets and looking particularly at the different data types of the cells that you can set in Excel. So by now when you are using Excel you should know that each of these cells can carry information and you can actually set what type of information is in each cell. And these are the most common types that are used to define what type of data will be in each cell or what its data type is. And the easiest way to change this is by clicking on the cell or a series of cells if you want to do a whole bunch of them at the same time and then clicking over here and here you can set the different options. So we're going to discuss the different options so that we can see and understand what what they mean and when to use them. The first one is the number. Now the number is quite straightforward. If you type in any number, whether it's decimal or not, it will then be registered as a number. Now all of them by default are general, but then you can actually set it as a particular number, for example, and it will get rid of any leading zeros if it's in front and so on. You can also right click on the number and go here to format cells. And you can specify how you want those numbers to look, how many decimal places must be displayed, how you want negative numbers to be displayed, if you want it to have just the negative, or maybe you want it to be in red or so. So you can specify all these details over here. We're going to make it three decimals so that we can see that full number. And that works for both integers and real numbers. So if you've got decimals or not, you can specify how many decimals. You can also do that over here by specifying if you want to decrease the decimal, so we want to make less decimals visible, or increase it. That doesn't actually change the number, it just changes how the number is displayed. When we do that, that number is not changed to 45.6, it's still 45.569 as you can see there in the formula bar, but it's just displayed as if the numbers have been rounded off. Now sometimes you can need to display numbers but in a monetary format, so for example like money, so we've got 150 rand and 99 cents and we want that to be displayed as money, then we can click on that block and we can change it to currency and it will put the default symbol for you, the currency set by your computer there. I'm in South Africa, so this is why it sets the rands. Accounting is just another way to display numbers in some sort of monetary format. So if I put in 150.99, but then I set the cell to accounting, then you can see it displays it like that, where the symbol is left aligned and the number is right aligned. You can choose the format that best for you. You can also use this option over here to specify if you want it, like for example, if you want, if you want to change it to dollars, for example, you can do that there. Or you can right click on the cell, go back to format cells, and because it's currency, you can specify the symbol that you want to use. If you want a particular monetary symbol, maybe you want pounds or dollars or whatever, you can go find it over here. And the same applies for currency, you can also specify the symbol over there. Now date and time, they are obviously switched for if you type in dates and times. You need to determine what is the format of your computer. If I come over here and just type in now, there we can see that this format for this computer, it's here, then month, then day. So if I want to put in a date, so the 2023-02-10, that would be the 10th of February. It will automatically set it to date, but we can specify if you wanted to make it a short date or if you wanted to make it a long date where it's in full writing. And if you just put in the day and the month, for example, so we say the seventh month of the third day, it will put the third of July and it'll put the current here in for you automatically. The same with time, if you put in a colon, it'll put that as a time. If we set it to a time, you can also right click on it and go to format cells. And here you can specify which format you want it to be. If you also want to include split seconds, if you want to include the AM or PM. And the same goes for the date. If you format the date, you can specify the format of the date. For percentage, if you were saying like for example 53 divided by 60, that would give you the decimal number. But if you wanted that represented as a percentage, you could click on the percentage symbol over here. Or you can format it as a percentage. Some people in their calculations will do this calculation and multiply it by 100. If you are setting it to a percentage format, you don't need to do that times it by 100. And again, you can format the cells and specify how many decimal places. So this will automatically take whatever your calculation is so that it can be seen as a percentage format. For fraction, if you say 1 divided by 4, that is 0.25 as a decimal number, but if you want it represented as a fraction, that's 1 over 4. So we're going to set that as a fraction, and it will set it as 1 slash 4, which is a fraction format. And you can also format it over here and specify how many digits you're going to allow up until. 
So scientific form, for example, if we've got this number and we want to put it in scientific notation, we can select the scientific notation and it will display it. You can format the decimals as well over there. This is for if you're doing scientific notation, if you're dealing with really, really large numbers and you want them in scientific notation. Text is if you want to display information just as it is, for example, hello, Mr. Long, then it will automatically put it as text. Sometimes you might want a number as text. For example, I want an address saying 12 Church Road, for example. Now, because there's other text, it's picked up that it's text, but you can also put a apostrophe first, and then it will automatically think that that number that you type in is text. You notice how that is left aligned because it thinks that it's text. You can also set it to text so that it specifies that number as text. This is particularly useful when you're storing, for example, telephone numbers. For example, if I made this just a general and I stored a cell phone number in here and pressed enter, you notice how it makes it a number and gets rid of the leading zero. If I wanted to keep it as a cell phone number, then it would be good to change this to either change it to, to text change it to the text option or when you type in the number first type in an apostrophe followed by the number and then it will treat it as a text value and keep that leading zero or for example if you've got a plus two seven for example remember that apostrophe then that would also make sure that it doesn't get rid of that plus sign cell phone numbers are normally good to keep as text because you never really do calculations on cell phone numbers and you want to keep that leading zero or plus two seven for the country code in front of it and then custom. Custom is where you can customize your particular format. So I'm going to put in a date, for example. So I've put in a date. And if I come and I customize it, so it's got a format cells and we want to make it custom, you'll notice that there are different codes that we can use to specify the format. So for example, if I wanted just the here, you could put wah, wah, wah. Maybe you want the here as just two letters, you could do that. If I wanted just the month, you could put MM as a number. But if I put a third M, it puts it as the three letter format for the text of the name. And if I put four, it'll put the full name of the text for the month. And for day, if I put in two Ds there, it'll put the number in the number format. But if I put a third one, it will start writing the name of the type of day it is in its three letter format. And if I put a fourth one, it'll put the full name. So if I want to find out what day the 21st of November is in 2023, I can just do this to specify it as that format. And it will say that that is a Tuesday, even though it's still a date, it says that that is a Tuesday. Another format that we could use is, for example, we might want to specify that it is Tuesday followed by a comma followed by day in a number format followed by the month in full text followed by just the two letters of the year. So you could have something like that if that's what you specifically want. And when you get that error, you know that your cells aren't big enough because we put in quite a bit. And there you can see it's put it in that particular format. So if I give it a different date now, 2003 -06 -09, it will say the 9th of June 2023 is on a Friday. And here are all the other types of formats that you can play around with when dealing with numbers, for example, with currencies, with minutes and hours. They give you some examples over there, some just generalized formats that you could use if you want to customize using these particular codes. If you look online, they actually show you some other nifty things that you can use, for example, changing the color of the text and so on over here as well. But for now, all you need to know are the basics, and those are the basic formats that you will probably use when using Excel. For more videos on Excel, make sure you go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, go look at the playlist and find all the things on Excel that can help you, as well as following us on TikTok to find some more stuff there as well. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.